you, you know, your body tells you when something is wrong. It's outrageous is what it is. And that's when she was diagnosed with colon cancer. This is a preventable disease. How do I say it to you that I engage you? You can either have a major operation or you can die. I met my husband in college. She used to like me in college, but you know. And I could not stand him. When she found out I was single, um, she came back and started liking me again. <laughs> and, um, a couple of years later, um, my feelings changed. It was just great. We, you know, my twin daughters are from a previous relationship. Her daughter's from a previous relationship, but you know, everybody got along well. And, um, and then she got sick. I was sick for what seemed like forever. I was sick for at least six months. Horrible, horrible stomach ache. We literally went to the, to the doctor uh, four months straight. And they kept telling me, oh, you need to add more fiber to your diet. You know, try Metamucil. Her mother was a two-time cancer survivor. The doctors never really uh, looked into that. They just sent me home. And then one night, I just remember being on the floor in the bedroom. I couldn't breathe. It was awful. And I apologized to my husband. I said, babe, they're going to tell me what is wrong with me, whether they like it or not. I don't want an x-ray. I don't want to pee in the cup anymore. I don't want any blood tests. I want some imaging that can tell me what is wrong. You know, your body tells you when something is wrong. And that's when she was diagnosed with colon cancer. That was the night that changed my life. Stage three colon cancer, that meant getting a colon resection and within days getting the tumor removed. Literally three weeks after she finished her last cycle of chemotherapy, the cancer returned to her neck, which um, I guess graduated her, as they say, to stage four. There's absolutely no way you can get through something like this alone. Impossible. I need Eugene there and he has been there. He's my Superman. The road that you've been down has been a tough journey, it's been my rough. friend. Very, very rough. You know, we, we, we fear the C word, I think, mm -hmm. in this country. We really do. Everybody yes. does. Nobody wants to say cancer. Right. right. And once you say it, then you go, oh. Right, right. right. <laughs> you're coming to get me? Right. And then right. once it came and got you, then right. it's almost like you're embarrassed to say that it did. Yeah. So this six month period of time that you were misdiagnosed. While you were going through it, did the C pop in? Never. Never. I promise you. Because the doctors kept telling it isn't. Exactly, exactly. And you, re you respect doctors. They're doctors, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then see, Keisha, this is where I got to say it, not that you're wrong, but everybody else feels the same way. Uh -huh. Guys, if they were God, none of us would be sick. Right. They are professional people who take an oath of office that says, I will do no harm. That doesn't mean I know everything, right? Right, right. So you went that sixth time. I vowed that I would kick over a chair or rip mm -hmm. up some you know, magazines in the waiting room if they did not tell me that something was wrong. I've started to listen to my body. Your body will tell you when something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I demanded uh, CT scanning, imaging, anything that would look further than what they were looking at for six solid months. You know, very, very interesting when you listen to all the, the discussions and all the arguments that are going on when it comes to health care and national mm -hmm. health care. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they always say is that too many unnecessary tests. <laughs> and in your case, they didn't run a test. Exactly. Right. And I'm still going through that right now, even though I've had cancer twice. Mm -hmm. When um, it's time to do another CT scan, the insurance folks are scratching me. Well, why do you need another? Or CT mm -hmm. scan when you just had one three months ago. I get the certified letters all the time about denial of um, testing. When they understand that, it's the only thing that's saving your life. Right, right. So we, we, we've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, if the insurance is not going to pay for it, bill us, but the test yeah. is going to get done. Yeah. Right. That's we just where we're at right now. Right. Like, it's going to get done. Yep. And it's called now medical surveillance. That term means that. They're constantly watching me because of my history. 
Well, I want to hope and pray, and I know everybody at home is doing the same thing, that the surveillance stops. First of all, things could be worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> things could always be worse, mm -hmm. particularly as it relates to health, because you know, sick as I've been, I always think, well, I could have been dead, you know? Sure. So I always try to, to, to have a brighter perspective on things. Let me tell you something. I saw the tape of you guys. I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you walking around. Your, your positive attitude, the love that I see right now. I want to be mad at him sometimes, <laughs> but I can't because when I couldn't speak, when I couldn't express myself, he did but he always went beyond. He didn't say, okay, we'll take this prescription. He went home and he researched it. And he said, well, listen, Keisha, not the doctors, Dr. Eugene did. He always, uh, well, you may experience this side effect or that side effect. And I mean, I know it may not look like it, but he tried to get me on the healthy track. You have to talk, that's the only, I mean, you have to communicate. The one thing that we do that's unique, I think, is that we never go to bed angry, mm. ever. Ever. Even if we just have to grab it, I may not want to talk to him, but me grabbing his hand is communicating with him that everything is going to be okay. So you didn't even have to hold his hand for me to I see love it. This dude, in the man. I know. I love him. And then along with that, I got to get you on a healthy track. Okay. I'm going to change the way you eat. I'm going to give you a whole regimen mm -hmm. that's going to help number one chelate some of that garbage out of you because yes. you got a lot of stuff in Lots. you. You got a lot of chemicals yes. that are still there that mm -hmm. got to come out. Mm -hmm. We'll replace it with good, healthy, fresh fruits, vegetables start getting you on that kind of track, and let's see how we can hold this at bay even longer. Okay. Right. Can we do that? I, do absolutely. That. I want to live, Montel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Really. Thank you guys so much. For no, thank for you. Having. We really, really appreciate it. To help us understand how a healthy lifestyle can impact lives like Eugene and Keisha's, I turned to my friend, colorectal surgeon and professor, Dr. Jonathan Sakier. So, Doc, you see things like the story that we just reported yeah. about a woman who has colon cancer. She's a doctor for six months. Five different doctors. They all get it wrong. One of them told her, I know the one thing you don't have is cancer. It's outrageous is what it is. She's got a tough road ahead of her. Finally, she took ownership and said, you know, damn it, I'm not taking no for an answer. I want to know what's going on. You have that obligation with your doctors when you see a doctor. You know, the number one rule in medicine, the patient is always right. Colon cancer can be tricky in the early stages, but there are symptoms and there are signs and people need to know about them. Uh, but she shouldn't have accepted what, what happened. It's outrageous and it's a tragedy. And if it had been caught earlier, the outcome might have been very different. You know what your colon is? Yeah. Yes. Colon is the large bowel. It kind of starts down here, goes up across the middle, then down the left-hand side and it exits, you know. The lining of that bowel, if the cells go a little bit wonky, you get these mounded up polyps. And they are precancers, and you have them for years before they become cancers. Now there are things you can do to stop getting polyps, but for God's sake, pay attention, because they will become cancers. Unfortunately, every time you see a commercial or you hear something about that, it's always people who seem to be older, but we know for a fact oh, yeah. that cases of colon cancer are getting younger and younger and mm -hmm. younger. And number two, it is a preventable disease. Yeah. Preventable just by lifestyle, and if they started being concerned about that lifestyle right now. You, 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 you nailed it. This is a preventable disease. First question, what can you do? First of all is get informed, okay? And understand your personal risk profile based on your age, based on your family history, based on the genetics, all those kind of issues. Everyone needs to perform an audit, if you will, of their life. What am I doing? And how can I change it up for the better? And you should certainly get information. In this day and age, there's no excuse for not knowing. Secondly, the things you can definitely impact, exercise. Exercise is not only just about your heart, it, it actually helps prevent cancer. Weight, obesity impacts cancer. Your rate of cancer goes up. Also, your economic status. What can you afford to eat? Now, I happen to think that even people on low incomes can do a lot better than eating fast food, because fast food is poison. So keeping your weight under control, eating more fiber, eating less saturated fat, eating more leafy green vegetables and fruits like Montel talks about. Supplementation, what do you think about supplementation, doctor? Um, certain people, supplementation might be a very good idea. Selenium, 
or selenium has been studied in a range of different diseases, Montel, including cancer, and they found that in patients who present with colorectal cancer, they have something like one-third less selenium in their bodies than people without colon cancer. Uh, vitamin D, it's been shown in a number of studies to reduce the incidence of cancer and to help it, in some studies, to stop polyps even developing. A diet rich in selenium or supplementing, vitamin D3 can impact your risk of getting cancer. You should know about them, and I personally think you should do the best you can based on the evidence today. So then let's talk about the things that we need to do to be aware of when it comes to colon cancer. It's in your genes. It's coded that you are going to get colon cancer. But again, um, it can be avoided. It can be avoided by living the right kind of life and getting screened. So when should a person start thinking about being screened? Great question. Well, first of all, what is screening? Screen is, is looking for something before there are any symptoms, okay? And colon cancer thankfully declares itself quite early with symptoms. The easiest way to be screened is to have what's called a colonoscopy, which is where they, they insert, I used to do a lot of these, where you take a, a telescope and insert it where the sun don't shine, all right? Gotcha. And it's done under... I'm not looking for stars. No, you're not looking for stars. Gotcha. Okay. Um, it's not a big deal. Quite right. frankly, for one day, you just drink some fluids, you then drink this stuff, it cleans you out, then the next morning, the telescope goes up whilst you're sedated. Really not a big deal. Um, when should you start? Well, the general recommendations are at age 50 mm -hmm. for the average person. But if you've got any family history at all, a lot earlier, as early as your 20s, if there's a family history, looking for the polyps that will become cancers. How about how do I stop the tragedy from happening to me or another family friend? Colon cancer presents itself early on, but symptomatically, sometimes yeah. it really doesn't show them, right? So how do you know? Blood in the stool is a big warning sign. If you have difficulty going to the bathroom, if you have a sense that you've emptied your bowels, but it doesn't quite feel empty, mm -hmm. that means there could be something there. Pain, bloating, distension, nausea. You know, there's lots and lots of symptoms depending on the stage of the cancer and its exact location. But the simple message is, if you notice a change in your body, go to the doctor and do not accept anything other than the following words. We're going to, and forgive the pun, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And you do that, and you can avoid a lot of trouble. I don't think it'd be better said. Get to the bottom of this. Thanks, Dr. Sakir. Yeah.